This gotcha. is also fun. You, you gotta love people who have lost their jobs and then come back to finally like sort of, you know, get into like a, a, a Bullworth type of situation where they get to uh, speak from the heart. And here is Sean McCarthy. Man, he looks psychotic. <laughs> Uh, put that put that picture up. Like, uh, I get really like what? Uh, I mean, he's in a lot of pain. It's either right Sean now. McCarthy or it's like a cutout of Sean Kevin, McCarthy. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy. Sorry, Kevin McCarthy. I don't know where I get the Sean. You're thinking of Hannity? Yeah, Hannity Sean. Community. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, but uh, here he is with Jesse Waters, and um, Sam can't tell all the Irish guys apart. No, I can't, so, actually. Everyone so, I knew named McCarthy. So bigoted. Everybody I knew named McCarthy in Worcester was named Sean. Or, or Seamus. Or Kevin. <laughs> or Kathleen. No, not Kevin. Okay. No. No. Um, so here's Kevin McCarthy, um, former uh, Speaker of the House and former Congressman. And uh, in many ways, responsible uh, for, uh, like... Many people followed him out the door very quickly. When he when he quit early, I think that gave license to Buck to quit early, to Gallagher to quit early. And now the Republican caucus has 217 sitting members and the Democrats have 213. So if they lose one vote, it becomes 216 to 214. But if they lose two votes... It's 215 to 215. They can't do anything. Here is uh, Sean McCarthy, uh, excuse me, Kevin Jesus McCarthy. Jesus Christ. Talking to... Uh, That's how irrelevant you are, Kevin, now that you're out of office. Exactly. Who cares? Here's this dude talking to Jesse Waters. Well, I don't know what they're doing spending now, but when I became speaker, I instituted a 72-hour rule that got not just the members the opportunity to read the bill, but America as well. You'd never waive it unless it's a continuing resolution, something you're already doing so people would know. I, I think it's always helpful to allow people to read the bill, allow America to read the bill. And really this comes down to what's happening in Congress today, goes back to when those eight Republicans led by Gates partnered with every single Democrat to decide who could be speaker. That's when Republicans lost the majority. Jesse, remember what we were able to do in a small majority the first nine months? The strongest, most conservative border security bill. Energy independent. We did a parent's bill of rights. We stopped D.C. from decriminalizing. We stopped the pandemic officially. We stopped them from kicking out our men and women in the military who refused the vaccine. We had the biggest cut and savings voted on American history, more than $2 trillion. We got welfare reform. We cut $20 billion of that from the IRS that was going to hire to go after us. Very successful when you work together with a small majority, so, and all those bills had 72 hours to read them because people could get behind them. So how do you now... So that's a, a little dig at Mike Johnson there, essentially. Oh, yeah. Right? He just threw Mike Johnson under the bus. And Mike Johnson's already gotten like a huge, um, uh, intense um, anger from a couple of conservatives. And that's all it takes. Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, of course, uh, wanting to uh, get on television. And, uh, and, and so Mike Johnson has got some real problems. Now, let me just add that Kevin McCarthy is full of absolute garbage bull. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't uh, pass any of those things, or to the, to the extent they did, none of it became law. They passed the fewest number of laws in the history of Congress by half. In other words, the record was set a couple of years ago, and then they halved that. There, it's... it's I don't know if you'll be able to achieve this level of doing nothingness in the future. And it really is, in many respects, a failure of the uh, Biden campaign not to be running against this do nothing Congress. It's also hilarious to me how he has the temerity to talk about Gates and those eight 
extremist Republicans or whatever, and not mention the fact that he literally gave them the weapon that they needed to execute him, basically. Exactly. And rid it, wrote it into the agreement because he was so thirsty and desperate to be Speaker of the House that he said, hey, we'll do, as a part of my agreement to get the whole Republican caucus behind me, we'll do this motion to vacate. You can, if you're unhappy with me, you can kick me out any time. And you know what? They, they did. did. And it doesn't matter how stupid and self-serving Matt Gates is reasoning was or if it was because nancy mace didn't like kevin mccarthy for certain reasons that bubble under the surface about his conduct um it doesn't matter of, of what the reasoning was you allowed them to do so and you got burned <laughs> um this bill um that got passed a 1.2 trillion dollar budget it is good until september which is also just insane to me we get to do this all over again before the election. Yeah, I don't know what the theory is behind that. You know, if somehow, I don't know. I mean, I would imagine they're just going to pass a continuing resolution at that time. But I, I don't know if somebody thinks that it might be worth their while to, um, to uh, have that fight at that time. But there's some real lowlights in this... Um, in this budget maybe we'll go through it a little bit more uh, uh tomorrow but it cuts on raw funding until next march or ends or suspends it um there's a lot of stuff missing in the, in this budget in terms of like maintaining let's say the um the subsidies for high-speed internet the um of course, the Pentagon got everything that they wanted and more, as per usual. Um, there is $3.8 billion for aid to Israel in there. Um, that's basically just maintaining the already existing the annual uh, sort of um, uh, it's just restating it like we will still do this don't worry if you're yeah. committing a genocide we'll still give you what give you your dole oh yes we are complicit in you know uh, black and white letters yeah but what about the democratic wins in this bill oh wait there are none but it is interesting to see the sort of like um, the worst of the worst trying to separate themselves from they're equally worst of the worst. They just hate Matt Gates, And there's really not a huge ideological divide between these people. Matt Gates is just afraid of the Ethics Committee, and so he took this up. Uh, the other people that joined him, uh, a couple of them are just absolute bat crap crazy. And uh, Nancy Mace uh, wanted to be on television a lot. Here's Newt Gingrich, one of... The biggest grifters in American politics who um, are on with one of the biggest um, uh, fascists on American politics. Newt, if you were still speaker, uh, what would you say in response to the people hitting the exits? Well, I think, first of all, you'd have to have a totally different approach. Um, we shouldn't underestimate how bad what Matt Gates did was for the whole system. He unleashed the demons. He, he went after somebody who had raised $480 million, had gained seats for three elections in a row, uh, and he drove Kevin McCarthy out of office. And from that point on, it has been a disaster. Uh, I don't blame Johnson. I think Johnson has a hand, Speaker Johnson has a hand that's virtually impossible to play. And that's where I think some of the people uh, just make it worse. This is the best argument I've seen for why we need not only to elect Donald Trump, but to elect a very large majority with him. When I was Speaker, I had a lot more ability than, than Johnson did to run the House, because I had a big enough majority, you could have five or ten people who were crazy, and you could still govern. Uh, he doesn't have a one-vote majority. Uh, the fact is there are eight or ten or twelve people right. who are going to get up every morning voting no. <clears throat> the truth is they don't even know what they're voting on. All they know when they wake up in the morning is, I'm going to be a no today. So he really has no... Name them. Uh, name them. Not just Gates. Name them. I know. The big bad Gates. 
who said, we might do this to you, Kevin McCarthy. And he said, OK, here you go. Just please don't do it. But yeah, I think give... he said, I think the quote was go for it. Yeah. Or bring it well, on. Well, in the end, he said, bring it on. He tweeted that that age so poorly. But again, like, I can't. They, they, I'm sorry. Did I say bring it on? Yeah. I meant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Later. Let, let's move it along. <laughs> I mean, when have Republicans ever just voted no on something just to vote no on something? Absurd that they would ever do that. I've never heard of any instance that. of that. Um, it is. It really is amazing the level of disarray that they're in. I mean, can you imagine if this was like the Democrats? I mean, can you imagine if the Democrats were in this type of disarray? The, well, the, it would be it would be the only story we would hear about. What's funny is the thing that Kevin McCarthy said about it. He's like, you know, we were very productive with our majority. Like, it was like the actual person who could probably say that with a straight face is Nancy Pelosi because yeah. she had a pretty tight majority. Yeah. And there was very, very little rancor to actually like really destabilize anything to this type of magnitude. Well, that was her embarrassment like, for the party. That was her kind of crowning, I guess, uh, skill, right? Her the achievement was that she was much, she's been much better than Republicans in keeping her caucus together. Without a doubt. And uh, it does. the Democrats have been a fairly uh, unified uh, caucus. And that's been, um, you know, helpful, at least, uh, you know, in the context of when they were in the majority. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, there were the, we had a president who opened the door for Republicans to sort of uh, scuttle uh, what could have been a transformative um the piece of legislation here is um the five also lamenting there must have been like some type of notice sent out at fox we're mad at matt gates um but what's interesting is and and i guess we'll see like what did matt gates ultimately achieve um it is uh, conceivable that we uh, may not see uh, support for Ukraine pass, although it's starting to head in that direction, that if uh, Johnson wants to retain his speakership, reliant on Democratic votes, he will have to bring to the floor a uh, bill to support Ukraine I imagine they'll have to do that through a discharge uh, petition again. That means two thirds, but I think there's probably two thirds vote uh, in the, the House uh, for Ukraine funding. But here is, I'm sorry, not the fo uh, the five, the uh, outnumbered. It's uh, Fox's Emily Compagno and Kaylee McEnany. Marjorie Taylor Greene said, I have not talked to President Trump about this. Largely, President Trump and Speaker Mike Johnson have had a great relationship. Speak Mike, Speaker Mike Johnson just put out a tweet congratulating him on securing the nomination. Uh, seems like a pretty big voice you'd want to get input from since he's the titular head of the party at the moment. <clears throat> I feel we are seeing yet another tantrum by a tiny faction of that conference that is disrupting the entire machine that we just exhaustively waited for to get back on track. And here we are again, watching someone steal the time, steal the audio, steal the limelight, steal the attention. She says we should have our attention on the illegals streaming across the border on a million other things. No, our, our attention was on you while you gave a presser. I'm sick and tired of it. As a Republican, as an American citizen, I want them to get to work. I love speaking. Speaker Johnson, who would be better than him, MTG? What is your plan? And I don't want my legislature taking two days up to vote for that, to figure everything out, to look incompetent during a presidential election year. This is the last thing I want to be subjected with. This is, uh, it's frankly, at a minimum, it's disappointing. There's a great irony here, Carly. As I'm listening to Marjorie Taylor Greene, I hear her say, there's a video that everyone is focused on. That video is of illegal immigrants rushing our border. It is a video about six minutes ago we were set to play. It is a video that you're not seeing right now because instead we are talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. It raises the question, she didn't make this live, so nothing happens for right. two weeks. Mm -hmm. Is this a fundraising exercise so you can go back to your district for two weeks and fundraise off of it? What's the motive here? I get you're not in her head, but what's the motive? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think... 
the motive in part could be, this reminds me a lot of this scrum of uh, media around Marjorie Taylor Greene. It reminds me of a lot of what happened with Matt Gates when he did this to Kevin McCarthy. You become the most powerful person in Washington yes. during that period of time. So that could be a part of her motive. Another part of the motive might also be because she doesn't like the spending bill. And that's what she'll say when she gets booked on, on conservative shows to talk about this. Uh, Mike Johnson is not, what did she say, an arm of the Democratic Party in terms of <laughs> no, policy. Right. He is a strong conservative. I think what's happening with him, I think anybody who becomes House Speaker, it's a, a very big challenge, especially when you're dealing with such a slim majority. And he, he wanted to avoid a government shutdown. And mm -hmm. now look at what's happening. I, I mean, I find this fascinating. They are like just unleashing on Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates, um, and the what's also I think uh, just stunning to me is that you've got all of these right wing talkers on the same network, almost all in, co in concert, doing this over the course of twenty four hours, essentially, saying that. Congress, the, the Republican caucus is broken. What bigger sort of invitation do you need? <clears throat> the idea is that the, the idea that they are out ahead of the Biden administration in publicizing this is just shocking to me. Right, because I also don't think they would be this adamant if they didn't legitimately believe that this is like extremely politically harmful to them. Like, without a doubt, a huge, without huge a doubt, problem. they are trying to beat down. Like, like, we need to be unified here and make it look like we're doing something. You know, this is the thing: is that the the and and there's a story. We'll talk about this tomorrow. But Joe Biden is like getting ready to push some type of like incredibly draconian. Um, uh, immigration uh, uh, executive orders. What Axios referred to as the, the nuclear option for yeah. immigration still being um, on the table for Biden. Yeah, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I got it here somewhere in my stack. I can't. I can't pull it up now. But here it is. He is going to um, uh, supposedly. They're like the the bullets in the chamber. Uh, one of the the the, the sources they have. Um, the orders being considered would ban people from entering the U.S. if they illegally crossed the border and made it harder for people to pass the first interview in the asylum seeking process. This automatic criminality associated uh, with um, people uh, entering in the country without documentation. I mean, this is um, this is horrible. And. Instead of doing this, this is the lesson that they wanted to take from the Tom Swazi race. Who, by the way, said he'll save uh, Mike Johnson on Friday. I think he said that to the to the press. So the the point out of the Tom Swazi race was not that he convinced people who are anti-immigrant that he was more anti-immigrant uh, or could be. Because we, Joe Biden is not going to prove that he's more anti-immigrant than, uh, than Donald Trump. It's that Congress is not doing anything. And so you can get up there and say, this is a do-nothing Congress. They're not doing anything about immigration reform. And get all the mileage you need from those people who are concerned about immigration to the extent that they're even available to you as voters. Because even Fox is admitting, we're not doing anything. Mm. But the idea that Fox is going to say, Joe Biden really does hate immigrants as much as Donald Trump does. It's, it's just so blinkered. And it is, it is such an anachronistic set of, of politics where you do not realize that it's important to bring out your voters. It's it's hard it's hard to simultaneously like make the argument that the Texas a immigration bill is so draconian and so kind of like out of step with um, the Biden administration and then simultaneously basically just alluding to the fact that we just want to do the same thing but have it federalized. Right. It's got to be federal for it to be uh, really uh, appropriate. So dumb. So dumb. Um, and never mind how inhumane the policy is.